G'day GDL peoples, doors and windows, what a minefield. There are so many different things to take care of when you're doing doors and windows that I try to avoid them whenever possible because it's not a speedy thing to do. You've got multiple placement options within the wall itself. There's three different global variables to give you info on your door placement within the wall. There's MVO requests that you've got to deal with that tell you the detail level, the door swing. You've got macro calls calling different objects and top it all off the way you model your door is oriented differently to how you would model any other object so hold on to your hats there's going to be a bit of technical information here let's have a look a handy toolbar to have open is your edit gdl library parts toolbar not necessary but some people like it Make sure that under your work environment, model rebuild options, interrupt with error messages is turned on and open your GDL help, which is under help. Online resources from 27 on, GDL reference guide. That will open the PDF in a internet browser. You may want to download it and use your own PDF viewer. And the online help can be found at gdl.graphisoft.com and click on reference guide. Doors and windows have their own subheading under miscellaneous doors and windows. And in the PDF guide, miscellaneous, and it's down a little bit, doors and windows. So straight away, thing you need to notice is that you model your elements with a different axis orientation. So your standard axis orientation is as shown here, X to the right. So if you hold up your hand like this, with your fingers, middle finger pointed this way, this, this is your x-axis, y-axis, z-axis. And you can see that this is what's going on for your standard objects, x, y, and z. With a door, you model it as if it's fallen over face down with the outside of the door going down into the ground and the inside, so inside the room, pointing up, which is what we see here. So outside is below here. We've got our x-axis, which is the same. Our y-axis is pointing up the height of the door and our z axis is pointing into the room so that's the first confusion the second confusion is we've got multiple ways to place a door in a wall we've got eight different ways we can do it and here they are here and we've got three global variables that give us the orientation condition of each placement so to better explain that Let's put down a wall, just a generic wall. We'll make it 10 meters long. We'll have the reference line as the external, which is core outside. I'll put another wall here, just so that when we open it in 3D, we can orient ourselves correctly. And let's start a new object. New object, restore down using this button here. I could also have gone file, libraries and objects, new object. We need to set our subtype as a door subtype, which is model element opening, wall opening, and we'll just say door for now. We want it to be placeable. And if you're doing this for your company, fill out the others as well. And we'll, our parameters will have populated with the default parameters for that subtype. We'll turn off automatic hotspots in 3D, and I'll copy in some starter code to my 3D and my 2D scripts. We'll save our object and I'll just call it BDB test door. And now I can place it in plan. So I select the door tool. It's pre-selected up here, BDB test door. And I'll make my anchor point on the reference side, the external side, and I'll open it to the left as we're looking at it externally. Let's have a look at this in 3D. So I've done no scripting whatsoever. I've just created an object and this is the result. This is actually parametric. So if I change this to 800, changes, if I change this to, so what ArchiCAD is doing for us is creating a rectangular wall hole in the wall for us, even though we've done nothing, and it corresponds with the A and the B parameters. So that's not going to help us understand orientation of the door. So what I'll do is I will call a part that I've made. So I'll add in a call statement. What's call? We have a look under control statements and macro objects. Call, macro name string, 
So basically a way of running another object in your library. It's, it's all complicated terminology, call and macro name and blah, blah, blah. Basically it says run this object. That's what it's saying. If I just want to run the object with its default parameters, that's all I put in. Call and the object name. So I'll save that. We'll have a look in 3D. There's my axes. So what it is, that part is just like a widget that other 3D programs have that gives you a visual feedback on the different axes. Red is X, green is Y, blue is Z. So we can see the orientation of our door. Let's place another one. So at this time, instead of opening to the left externally, I'll open to the right, like so. Have a look in 3D. We can see our axes is the other way. I'll just add a prism to our door opening so that we've got something filling in that hole. Make it a little bit easier to read. If you remember from the episode we worked on with the holes in prisms, we'll just do something like that. We know what to do, don't we? Cursor jumps around a bit in this new interface. A little bit. A little bit glitchy. All right, so that should just give us the basic prism extruded to ZZYZX height with a hole cut out at the edge margin, so 100. We'll have a look at our 3D view. And that looks like what we scripted prism with a hole you'll notice however it's pretty massive pretty high and that's because zzyzx is not a parameter that is used indoors you can see it's hidden here so graphisoft for their subtype have created other parameters that you should use because you've got a bunch of different components that you use on a door you've got frame thickness leaf thickness glass thickness who knows what else on a door they're quite complicated so we'll use this one here, GS Leaf Thick. Much better. And that's how we did our prism, right? We started at zero, zero, went across to A, up to B, back to zero, and cut our hole. So let's see what happens if we've just put that in our door. Okay, not quite the result we wanted, is it? And that's because the door is drawing from the center. So I need to shift that across half an A. So what I've done is I've just shifted it across half the width. We'll save, have a look, and there's our door. Good. So it'd be nice to be able to see this in 2D as well, wouldn't it? Now, with our typical objects, what we do is we add in our project to statement, aren't we? Project two, and what is our syntax for that? Under 2D shapes, 3D projections in 2D, we have our projection code, angle, and method. So normally our projection code is three for top view. Angle, angle is normally as if you're sitting at a drafting table, right? Looking at your plan, so it's 270. And the method is hidden lines, two. So let's put that in, see what we see. Project two, three, 272. Save, have a look. Hmm, not quite what we're after, is it? And that is because you model your element flat on the floor. And so your door will be sitting like this when you model it and your X, your Y and your Z are like that. But when it gets placed in the wall, it gets tipped up. So the Y is actually pointing up the wall and the Z is pointing into the room. So we're going to need to use a different projection code. And what we need to use is side view two. So projection code of five and a different angle as well. So our angle will be looking from the top. So it will be a projection angle of 90. So let's put that in. Project two, five, 90 and it'll still be hidden line save much better that's what we're after
What I'd like to do now is get some visual feedback on what those three global variables are. So window reveal side, symbol mirrored, symbol rotated for each of my placement methods, each of my eight possible placement methods. If only there was some way that I could have some feedback on the screen about what they were. Well, there is, as it turns out, I'll just use a text to statement. Now text is another minefield, <laughs> similar to doors and windows. There's a lot going on with a text statement, a lot of preparatory work and setup that you need to do to do it right. But let's start simple, see how we go. So let's just type in text two. There's our syntax, I'll hit enter. X and Y, I'll just put it at zero and zero for now. And the expression, I'll just put in hello world. It's not what we're after right now, but we'll see what happens. There we go. Look at that. Hello world, hello world. I'll just delete this one for now so we can see what's going on. So it's placed in my hello world. Archicad has determined my font. Archicad has determined my font size, my font style, and its anchor point. But I've got some text on the screen. Let's replace that hello world with my window reveal side. Yeah. Oh, that cursor. That's annoying. Archicad. Graphisoft fix that cursor jumping around. Window reveal side. And I've used the proper variable because it's colored that text for me. Zero. Right. Barking dog and we foster kittens. So go figure. This little thing is trying to climb up my green screen, aren't you? You're not helping. You are not helping. All right, let's go. So let's put a door with each of these eight placement methods and see what we can get to spit out with these global variables. So anchor point on the outside, opening to the left externally. Anchor point on the outside, opening to the right externally. Anchor point on the outside, opening to the right internally. Anchor point on the outside, opening to the left internally. Anchor point on the inside, opening that way. Inside, opening that way. Inside, opening that way. Inside, opening that way. Right, there's our eight conditions. And this is reporting back our window reveal site. Make of that what you will. So I'll, ju I'll just refine this text a little bit. This is not a text tutorial, so. So I need to define a style. So what I've done here is I've defined a style, text style, that's a name I've made up. That will be Arial Narrow, 2.5 point size, anchor point one, which is the top left, and face code of zero, which is just plain text. I set my style, we're just going style, text style, I'll save that. There we go, it has changed to be Arial Narrow. Once again, this is not meant to be a text tutorial, so, but we need to do a little bit of refinement to make sure that we can actually read the outcome. I'll add in a carriage return, CR, and I'll make that carriage return by the global scale. I'll do a position Y, this will make sense in a minute, and I'll make a position X. And I'll change this to position X. Position Y, I'll say, and now what I need to do is I need to translate my integer value into a string. So I change it to a string, window reveal side. What is a string? So what have I done there? String, it's numeric expression, which is the window reveal side. The length, I only want it to be one long. And how many fractions, how many decimals? I don't want any. So that's what I've done there. Let's have a look. Right. Widow reveal side. Let's just change the scale a bit. Okay. So for this one, we can see the window reveal side or the global variable of widow reveal side. Zero, zero, one, one, and so on. Now this is just a hack so that we can figure out 
what these variables are returning. This one will go pos y minus cr carriage return. We will make this one symbol mirrored. Symbol mirrored zero, symbol mirrored one, and so on. The last one, we'll make this symbol. All right. There we've got the feedback on all of our different placements. I haven't bothered to put in this text correction for the rotation. That's a lesson for another day. But that information is there so you can figure out what's going on. So one thing to point out, which Graphisoft themselves have in their help, is that depending on where you are on the window reveal side, it doesn't transform right. So you can see the door sitting good here. The door is not sitting good here, it's sitting outside the wall. Same with here. Sitting outside the wall, sitting inside the wall. So half of these are right, half of these are wrong. And if we have a look at our feedback here, we'll see that they're sitting outside the wall when window reveal side is 1. When it's 0, it's sitting correctly. When it's 1, it's sitting incorrectly. And so the way you correct that, in the reference guide under doors and windows, beneath their beautiful diagram, they've got some sample code on how to correct various transformations that you don't want, where they're testing symbol rotation angle, symbol mirrored, and window reveal site to correct it. You don't need to do all of these all of the time, and you may not need to do any of them. But in this case we do, and at a bare minimum, code I like to use is in the 3D script we go add Z for transformation minus GS frame thick and multiply that by widow reveal side and we'll delete one down here ah are you seeing this Graphisoft this cursor just jumps around it's a pain in the neck delete one Save. Now keep in mind I've used the frame thickness, not the leaf thickness. So we can see here that it has corrected my offset to my frame thickness. Just to make that a bit clearer, I'll just change this leaf thickness of my prism to frame thick. There. Sitting nicely. We'll check our 3D. It's all sitting in the walls the way they should. Good. Okay. Got my poly 2B in place, which will just draw a nice rectangle for my leaf. Oop. Got that wrong. Look at that. And there is my leaf. Can't tell because it's still got the project 2 turned on. So let's just comment that out. And I need to make sure that my end is actually at the end and not excluding my script. All right, there's my door. I added in a axes call and I commented out my project two in my 2D script. So what we notice here is that the axes are around a different way in the 2D. Well, that's a bit odd, isn't it? Let's just reactivate this project two. So my 3D axes goes in, and my 2D axes goes out. So something to pay attention to is that the axes in 2D are different to the axes in 3D. So in 3D, the axes point into the room. In 2D, they point out of the room. Now you just need to pay attention to that when you're scripting your 2D. So with my Poly 2B, instead of drawing in the positive Y, I need to draw in the negative Y. So I'll just add those. My leaf now sits in the wall except here, where my window reveal side is 1. Again, it's sitting on the wrong side of the wall. So now I need to add a transformation 
that goes add to nothing in the X and I need to go tick by widow reveal site save now all my door leaves are sitting correctly in the wall good let's just add a door frame just so that it's a little bit more like a door All right, can't see anything here in plan. We have a look at 3D. Oh, big thick leaf. I'll just change this to leaf thick. All right, so we've got our door with our door leaf, different thicknesses. Looking good. Now in our 2D, our door leaf. Here's our 2D axis. We'll go minus O2. Whoops. Right, and I'll put in my frames now as well. And I'll just do that twice. Yeah, this ArchiCAD 27 change to the GDL editor. Good. Needs some work. This cursor jumps around quite a bit. Right, so what this loop is doing is it's just drawing a little rectangle, but first of all, I'm going to the left side of the opening, drawing my rectangle, cancelling that transform, mirroring my transform, which then takes me to the other side of the opening. That's the plan. We'll see what happens. Right, so there's my door leaf. So I actually, well, my, there's my door. I actually want my door leaf opening. So we're going to open our leaf as we're looking at it at the screen that way. We want our actions to mimic the Graphisoft doors wherever possible so that when people use them, they are not thrown by their different behavior. We want it to be familiar behavior, appearance, and performance. So I've got our door leaf down here. This is our door frame. So in order to do this, we need to add half our width minus our GS frame width. We need to rotate our opening angle and then draw our leaf. Now keep in mind that because your x-axis and your y-axis, the positive is this way, that if you just do a positive angle, it will rotate anti-clockwise. We want to rotate clockwise. So what does that look like? We'll go add to. So that's got it into the right position in the right angle. I'll just change how I've done my poly 2B so it draws from the corner. I'll just put in a variable here that I can use for leaf width instead of having to do these calculations every time. Sweep my two transformations. Let's see, did I get it right? Whoops, missed one. There we go, there's our leaf. Rotated the opening angle, so if I was to change this opening angle, that changes. Good. We'll just draw in our little arc as well. So the arc 2, you can see how it works here. Your axes X and Y. You've got your center point X and Y. Your alpha is your start angle and your beta is your finish angle. So we're over to the right. Our axes will be like this. Let's just, let's just comment out our first axes. We put in a second one here so that we can see what we're doing. So X is pointing down, Y across. So I'll add in our door arc. This can get quite confusing if I've got it. The axis rotating while I'm trying to figure out the arc as well. So I want to get rid of my rotation transform before I draw in my door arc. 
So I'll go delete one here, change that to one there. Let's have a look at what our axes do. So X is there, Y is there. So we'll draw in our arc here. So if we've got our axes like this, 0, 90, 180, 270, and it draws in an anti-clockwise direction, the arc, we want to start at 180 minus our open angle and finish at 180. So we've got arc 2, 0, 0, There it is. Now if we test this, just open it at 45, or if we open it at, okay, that works. Works there, works there. So all the arcs are working correctly, but what we've got a problem with is this not being offset in the wall properly. And if you remember that's because we started with our leaf thick, that should have been frame thick. Let's change that. And it all sits in the wall nicely. Wonderful. Let's have a look at our 3D. So these first two, the leaf should be on the outside. Leaf on the outside, the next two, the leaf on the inside. These back, we've got leaf on the inside on two of them, and then leaf on the outside on the other two. Which is what we've got here. So our 2D corresponds with our 3D. So the next thing that you want to pay attention to with your doors and windows is your MVO settings. So as you know, under your model view options, you have the capacity to turn on and off doors and windows here. You've got capacity to adjust their detail level under this tab here. And also capacity to change various aspects under the miscellaneous settings. And you do that under the expressions and functions, functions, library global command but that's for another video. So I'll stop there. As you can see, it's quite a complicated topic and we've probably only touched on about a third of it. So give it a go yourself, ask questions on the forum, have a look at the reference guide, and I'll see you in the next one. Go script some GDL.